That was yeah. perfect. All right. Um, welcome everyone. Get started. Call the meeting to order at six oh five. Uh, Alyssa, one of the leadership members, is going to be here. She's about five ten minutes late. So she'll be stepping in. Um, welcome back, everyone. We'll see everyone after a couple of weeks. Everyone have survived school vacation. Yes. Enjoy the almost fifty degree weather today, for the most part. All right. Um, <clears throat> Couple housekeeping items before we dive into the agenda. Is anyone, is everyone, I should say, receiving the emails that go out to the SBAC email list? I think there were like a handful, maybe three or four that were having issues. Okay. Anyone who's not, who's going to see me after the meeting or during break, we'll try to get names and get that sorted out. But otherwise, everyone else is receiving what's going on. Excellent. Perfect. Um, all right, so everyone should have gotten when we sent the agenda out. It was what last Thursday, give or take. So, without further ado, we're going to kind of dive right into it. Um, at least my thought process was <clears throat> in terms of what we're looking to accomplish tonight. Everyone went through their homework assignment, documents to go through to really try to get the entire committee up to the same baseline in terms of knowledge, understanding. Everyone's kind of coming at this. A wide variety of experience involvement in the process. Some are some are latecomers, some have been at this since the very beginning. Just trying to make sure everyone's kind of on, on the same plane, so to speak. So one of the things now at item two on the agenda would be um, discussion about just adopting some guiding principles for this committee. Um, the three that were on here were just kind of three that was part of the brainstorm session. Um, but I would open the floor in terms of discussion on or what we think about those three, anything to add to it, subtract, anything like that. Welcome. We welcome any and all feedback. No? All right. Everything sounds good. Okay. Um, only thought I had for one to add on there. Um, oh. Can you put that up on a bulletin board or something? Uh, I don't. It's. Good. April, can you, I mean, uh, April, can you join? Let me see how quickly I can do that. Yeah, it's in my computer. So the thing to point that out, um, the three that were on there were transparency, open-mindedness, and respectfulness. That just, you know. Commitment. Commitment? Other thoughts besides those four? Yeah. We'll, we'll hang tight one sec to see if we can put it up on the Thank you. Oh. So, aside from those three the gentlemen that um, added commitment on there, any other thoughts? Are we everyone kind of good with those four? Okay. Um, do we have a motion then to adopt those four? I mean, the three up there plus commitment. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Mm -hmm. All opposed? Right, motion carries. <clears throat> Moving on <clears throat> to number three. Um, I think uh, April is four, but we'll talk about the, the norms. There should be a. So, again, just getting us, getting us up and running um, would be an open discussion and adoption of kind of some ground rules or some group norms, just kind of how to, to go about. 
treating each other, this whole process. So this was, these are in no particular order, just a list uh, of some that were put together. Um, what I would like to do um, is just take a couple of minutes, talk amongst yourselves, um, thoughts on feelings about the ones that are up here, things to add, things to remove, things to prune down. We certainly don't have to do every single one that's here, um, but just to get us uh, maybe a handful of, of guiding principles. Discuss amongst yourselves, probably take about five or so minutes. I personally have a issue with what I debate. The baby is I live on Yeah, 
Take just a couple more minutes and then come back together. discussion there um, and then thank you Tom had reminded me for everyone out in in zoom world um, please raise a hand and you're welcome to chip in as well I don't want to forget about, about the folks out there can they sign in what's that can they sign in so you know whose names are there uh, so I think we have a yeah, list I would have to stop sharing my screen in order for us to see the people oh. on zoom so we're going to try and go back and forth okay. the best we can but they're all signed in as um Panelists, so they have okay. microphone and, and can access. So I open open the floor uh, to discussion. Thoughts on that list? Anything that seems superfluous? Things to take away? Honor timing. Is that like if someone was going to speak? Is it a certain amount of time? Is it honoring the timing of like the six eight? Is, is I, I one of my reading of that was more. The former what you were talking about, which okay. is not, you know, trying to be respectful of, I mean, everyone has input to offer, but not to monopolize the time. But I also do want to start and stop on time. And honor. <laughs> so I guess both would be my answer to that. All right. Um, if that makes sense. Okay. I Sir. think if uh, we're going to break up into the work groups, somebody should be made a scribe to write down everything the group is talking about and have one person to try and kind of Make sure there's no tangent alert that we get off off time. So if there's a quasi leader or rotate the leader throughout the group, and somebody's going to be able to be ascribed. Okay. I'm trying to think if there's a good way to summarize that in a, in a nice, easy group norm. But if I knew it, I'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. I saw another hand up. Yeah. So we um, we talked about just providing timely feedback. So the first is kind of holding back and waiting a few days and then, you know, providing feedback after the fact. So as discussions come up, just being timely about your input. Okay. Timely input. Way in the back. Can you please summarize what people are saying? Because they're speaking towards the front and those of us in the back may not be able to hear it. So if you could just repeat a little bit of it. Sure, you. absolutely. Thank you. Um, up in front, it talked about um, timely input. So if you have feedback to offer, I'm trying to paraphrase, if you have feedback to offer, offer in a timely fashion. Thank you. Yep. So, uh, Mr. Pritchard. Jim, Jim, sorry. Ground statements and evidence. What do you mean by that? Um, <clears throat> what do I mean by that? Well, it's trying to avoid, I guess, speculation. Um, trying to take in this whole process kind of a, an evidence-based approach, fact-based approach. Um, does that make sense? Trying to avoid just saying, oh, I think it's probably X, Y, and Z. I'm trying to, hopefully I'm making sense by saying that. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. And the other one is, I'm <clears throat> to learning, not debating. In my history, I think debating an issue, information comes out that nobody, so I, I hear what you're saying, but I still think if somebody raises an issue and there's some debating, further information will come out that might be helpful to us. Mm -hmm. 
Did everyone hear what Mr. Jim was talking about? Um, talking about debate, uh, the one that talks about commit to learning, not debating, comment in order to share information, not to persuade. Um, we certainly want there to be healthy debate. Um, but I don't think that's eliminating that. And if the tension goes too far, that's where you can step in and put a stop. Right, right. That's the chair. Do you see any other hands up? When, uh, allow, or if anyone on Zoom that wishes to weigh in, we'll stop sharing the screen for one second to see if there's any hands raised. <clears throat> Don't see anyone. Okay. So any other input anyone to offer just in terms of group norms or just so I'm, I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth is we fine with this entire list or are we trying to prune some of this back or is everyone's kind of good with what with what's up here. It's your typical HR uh, list. I mean, it's it's it is what it is. Let's move on. I'm concerned we're four months post-election and we haven't talked about a thing of substance yet. Every meeting we've had so far has been, let's flip chart this, let's, you know, let's start talking about substantive issues. We'll get there. I promise we'll get there. In how many more meetings? In how many more months? You know, the, the clock is ticking. And I don't, I don't say this, I'm not being critical of you or of this, you know, but, but, but we just need to start talking about what the issues are. You know, I, I grew, the group norms thing, that's all fine. Go to any HR book and you can photocopy that page and, and there, you've got it. Um, and nobody's going to live to all of them. I'm not going to, I mean, I'll try, but to tell me I'm not going to be able to debate issues with people is foolish. I mean, that's, that's, not even, that's not even realistic. So my frustration is, let's move on. Let's start talking about the issues that we have to address to get through this. Do I hear, do I hear a motion on what to do I mean, with these yeah, norms? You can have a motion, you can not have a motion. You just ask if there's any observation. There's my observation. I move to adopt the list. I'll second. Can I get your name, sir? Uh, my name is Fred. Uh, Fallensby. I heard a second Fallen somewhere speak. out there. Second. Okay. All in favor? All opposed? All right. Motion carries. Uh, all right. Next, next on the agenda would be um, creation of a communication subcommittee. Um, some of the feedback I've just received individually was um, some criticism in terms of a perception about lack of communication. So I think this is an important one to get formed right out of the gate. Um, in terms of <clears throat> four positions that were listed here, chair, vice chair, secretary, and then a representative from the leadership team. So again, this was just kind of spitballing, not saying that's set in stone. Um, but I would open it up for discussion in terms of, is there interest? folks here to be on this what what the formation is going to be and whatnot and uh we'll see from that sir can i ask a question before we get into the discussion about that subcommittee sure i think when we were here last time we heard that the leadership group was going to come up with a list of what the subcommittees were going to be so this is one presumably but presumably there are others as well have you guys had a chance to think about that yet because we probably need to know what they are so that we can decide which ones we want to potentially volunteer for. This one is crucial, but there are others that are crucial as well. So I don't know if you've got there yet or not. There, there's been some, the leadership had some discussions on it. We don't have any kind of a list together yet, um, so other than getting communications up first and foremost. Um, okay. <clears throat> again, tonight when we're talking about bringing up to speed, um, getting everyone kind of the same baseline, and, and we'll talk about it more further in the agenda in terms of discussion of the problem. Does a problem exist? Getting us all in agreement on that. Okay, we identify there's a problem that needs to be solved. Okay, now we can start talking about what are we trying to solve? For? And then I think that's where the subcommittees come out of that. Does that make sense? It does. It does. 
Can you share more about your vision for what the communications group would, would do and how they would interface with the leadership team? Certainly, um, this is just kind of what I'm thinking, but yeah. anyone in leadership is welcome to jump in. Um, really big picture, just as much communication as possible. There's a reason why when the list was made in terms of um, guiding principles, transparency was number one. Uh, getting it out there as much as possible, whether it's website, newspaper, social media, um, the more we can get out there, the better. I would like to have a representative from the leadership team on there to kind of be the liaison. So communications subcommittee is talking about, should we put out X, Y, and Z? There's some input coming from the leadership back to that. Um, that's kind of big picture vision without getting into the super nitty gritty details. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I would also suggest that the communications committee um, is looking externally, but also internally <coughs> in terms of um, going back and forth between the leadership group and the larger group. That's a very good point. That's, and that's, as I'm sure everyone has seen in the last in two weeks from our first meeting, there's some kinks and we're kind of ir ironing out some of the wrinkles in terms of getting everyone on the email list, email back and whatnot, but that's a, that's a great point, Brian. Do you envision there being either town staff or school staff that would help with Ideally, I would that's I would defer to probably the town manager and some of the <laughs> some of the council on that one. Um, ideally, yes. Yeah, so I don't really want to just have the communications committee say you can figure it out on your own kind of a thing. So yeah, certainly the town staff is prepared to help. I think the what what and when you communicate is really a, a function of perhaps a subcommittee, but uh, we're sort of pleased to support you. And one thing I, I apologize, I forgot to mention very early on, the, the two representatives from the school board are not here tonight because there was a pre-scheduled um, goals focusing or goals goal setting workshop for the school board that had been set a while ago. That's the reason why they're not here. Um, I wanted to note that for the record. Yes, ma'am. So when you're talking about communications on the outside, you said website, um, I suppose corporate leader, things like that. Um, I was just wondering, like, uh, what kind of content we're gonna, I guess, put out there. I mean, of course, be transparent. Um, I know the town is very sensitive about this topic, so I we'll probably want to like. There's transparency and like, how often are we going to be communicating? Well, I think there's there's a baseline. You know, at the very least, we need to talk about meeting minutes, agendas, material um, along those lines. And it's this is just my thoughts on it. So everyone's welcome to disagree. Is really the more the better. Informing everyone what what the discussions are. Um, I'm not saying you know every every week be a new article in the leader with a dissertation about everything that went on, but just trying to get as much information out there. I just offer up to as part of the communications. Effective communications are desirable, right? You want it to be effective, whatever you're sending out there. So you're going to have a lot of minutes. You're going to have subcommittee meeting minutes. You're going to have a regular meeting minutes. You'll have leadership team minutes. Those can get dry and mundane. How do you sift those down into an executive summary to be shared with the public? What's coming next? What are we talking about in two weeks from now? Where's our interest? There's things that sub that communication subcommittee can be working on to help raise visibility within the community. And whether that communication subcommittee believes the Scarborough leader is the best way, whether it's having its own website, that's I think that's a good discussion point for that communications committee to solve for. You know, how do we do this best? Yeah, sounds good. And then there's also the, the feedback, right? So, so the articles that get posted out, the comments that get placed on that, right? Bringing that feedback back to this group so we can take that into consideration as we go. Are you saying that the committee like would be these four people plus a bunch of other people, or is that it, four people? I, it's open to the group. I think we need to decide on, on a number. Um, that seems small for people. I agree, I agree. If, is it five people, seven people? You also kind of want to avoid you know, a 27 person committee, but no, it's, this was just kind of placeholder 
idea kind of thing. Budget. If we wanted to put a quarter page ad in every leader for the next 26 weeks, you know, half the year, do we have the money to do that rather than just articles which may or may not get in? Heard of it? <laughs> Bail me out here. Yeah. Sam and Pete do not. However, I, I would tell you that uh, Luke Ken Johnson, our former counselor, he brought up the fact that there is a section of the leader that has been earmarked for some content that really has been underutilized. So whether we talk to the leader again about doing every other week, there's a communication out from the subcommittee that that makes the leader. Uh, but for paid ad space, we don't have that budget. Is it being anticipated in the next budget? Not yet, but that should probably come out of this committee too, right? Like we, we need to have a realistic um, expectation if we're working towards communicating a specific project or working towards a referendum day, then I think that changes um, at least where I would consider what the budget needs to be. And so we, we're still, we're early in the budget process. There's plenty of time um, to, for this committee and this body to make a request for sure. Looking at the budget process that you're talking about, are we talking about this being part of the school budget, part of the town budget? Because okay. this is a school project. Yeah, I, I don't have a right off the cuff preference. Would you like which it to come out of your left pocket or your right pocket? Yeah, I guess. Well, <laughs> what I mean is, you know, you guys, <clears throat> you're going to fight over budgets. <clears throat> Excuse me. School's got their part that they got to fight over. The town's got their part. We're going to ask for a piece of the pie, which one is going to go to, because we might run into more objections from one or the other. Sure. I think, I think this committee should probably be strategic and have those kind of conversations about which party they would like to propose and submit a request to. <laughs> That's fair. So you have your hand up. This is, uh, if I'm getting ahead of myself, please. Uh, so in terms of us being here tonight, uh, are we, in addition to communications, uh, et cetera, are we going to get started on a framework? And as an example, uh, identify the need relative to the school. We know we're starting from square one. So identify the need with all of the data that's available. Identify our potential options. We have the community schools, we have the middle school. And as we're going along in, within this framework, all the while keeping an eye on what the potential budget, how it's going to impact the potential budget. And so I came here tonight thinking that in addition to what we've already talked about, that when you mentioned groups, I kind of envisioned groups that would now start with the need, the options, and being sensitive to budget of the impact to the town. And so I kind of envisioned groups and each group might have a specialty that might be looking for the property, identifying the needs, what are our options. And so I don't know if I'm too early in this thought process, but is that where we're going? That's where we're going. I don't see us tonight in terms of setting up other subcommittees. Um, I think ideally by the end of tonight, it's going to be, are we all in agreement that there is a problem? What are we trying to solve for, for a problem? And then probably homework before next meeting is going to be starting to brainstorm or thinking what are, like you were just talking about, so what are some potential subcommittees? Are we going to have a budget impact subcommittee, for example? So I don't, I don't think you're, you're not ahead of the game now. It's, that's where we're going to end up ultimately. But I don't expect us to walk out of here tonight with we're going to have subcommittee X, Y, Z. And right. I'm just trying to get a thought my head around what the potential framework might be. And within these groups, with, within the town, I know, I'm sure we have people that have uh, experience in contracting, <clears throat> land management, all the things that go along with it that could be part of each committee, or a committee could have a specialty. All to be determined, or we will get there eventually, certainly. Thank you. I, I just want to remind, uh, and certainly there are folks in this room that were 
far more instrumental in forming the charge to this committee, but this has been billed as kind of phase one, really identifying a conceptual direction. Uh, presumably there is a phase two, if not more, that would perhaps study in detail uh, all the elements, budget, site, you know, all those sorts of things to actually execute on, on that vision. So unless I'm wrong, I just want to remind everyone, we're really looking at the big picture. What is the, the general conceptual direction that we should pursue? I guess in the interest of time, then maybe I can suggest uh, people showing anyone who has interest in the communication subcommittee. I know I do. I don't know what these roles are, but love to be involved. Maybe we could have a sign up sheet and emails and go from there. And then that way we can get to discussion. For time. I like that idea. And one thing I was going to add, um, an email I received is from one person on this committee with some concern about Hey, if I join the communication subcommittee, is that the only subcommittee I can be on? I'm sure there's probably people are concerned about being locked in to one. I don't, unless I'm speaking out of turn for leadership, I don't necessarily see an issue with people being on more than one subcommittee. Now, do we want everyone in every single subcommittee? Probably not, but I don't want there to be concern about if someone wants to be on communications, are they just locked into that and they feel like they don't get to give input on building or land or anything else that might come down to it. Um, I second that. I do think there should be some flexibility to some extent for if communications decides to start with four and they're realizing the workload that's coming at them and they say, you know, we need more hands-on. I believe there should be flexibility to say, is anyone interested in joining? They will, you know, have to catch themselves up on what's been done. Um, but, you know, it, it does sound like, you know, people are a little bit concerned about rightfully, everyone has time in their day, but, um, you know, workloads, what am I doing? What's the charge each piece? And it's understandable and should be respected. And then if they're hitting a point where we need more hands on, that that should be an open opportunity. So once on a subcommittee is still somewhat open. <laughs> Well, I, I just might observe, it's not been determined, but it strikes me <clears throat> the cadence of this meeting isn't quite finalized, but to the extent, I think we've got this room for uh, every Monday night through end of May at this point. Uh, it strikes me that there may be some Monday nights where you're using it for subcommittee time, that you're not meeting extra outside of this meeting. Simply making the point, it may be difficult to serve on multiple committees if they're meeting simultaneously, uh, but that remains to be seen from the body. I appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was just wondering if we could maybe in a next meeting or whatever have a, a clear definition of the communication subcommittee because it does sound like it's huge as far as like responsibility and that there's, I guess you're gathering the notes on the committees and then the notes on the leadership. And then, I mean, there's so much information that. Um, yeah, it sounds like there's going to be a lot of delegating of who's going to handle what on the committee. Mm -hmm. So it, just so that we know that there's communication is communication subcommittee is covering everything that we talk about. Right? Yeah, absolutely. As no, it's, it's vital. Committees and then leadership. <laughs> Leadership committee, uh, whatever. So going off what you had said, ma'am, we can pass this around so the sheet if you have any interest, put your name on here. Um, and then I guess, again, in the interest of time, um, if I have a motion, we can table the any kind of formal formation of this for tonight so we can kind of get to the meat of the meeting. And then we'll have a sense of who's interested, how many, and we can kind of get the pieces together after that. Does that make sense? Do I have a do I have a motion? Move. Second. All right. And Jim was the second. Yeah. Uh, do we have any weigh in um, from Zoom or from stuff? Sure. Yeah, I am. I, I just wanted to say that I, I'm ready to put a motion out there to create the subcommittee. You know, with like up to 15 people. At the initial um, uh, 
the initial responsibility being someone from the executive group to get that group together for their chairperson, vice chair, and secretary, create their own norms and report back to this group in the next number of days. I'm a, I'm a little rusty in my Robert's rules, but I think since we had a motion in a second, we but have- that's to... not a motion, that's a comment on the motion. Ah, gotcha. But I guess I'm, ru I'm, rust I'm very rusty in my Robert's rules. So. A motion to table actually doesn't have any discussion. <laughs> well, there for uh, so I, we have a motion on the on the floor to table it until the next meeting. And we have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. April, are you able to see anyone online? Yeah, nobody has to. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, moving on. <clears throat> so breakout group session. Um, everyone saw from the homework assignment. Hopefully there's the, the three, or, three or four documents that everyone went through. Um, roughly how many do we have in here tonight? The issue change. So I'd like to count off kind of like the school theme, going back to school, count off um, in groups of, let's do groups of seven for the time being. So one through seven, kind of break everyone up. I, I don't know the rules, but can I make a motion to shorten the time and break out maybe to 30 minutes or so to have more time in the larger group? I don't know if anyone's in agreement, but 60 minutes feels like a lot. Um, check in at 30 minutes. Check, 30 minutes. Yeah, I'm flexible. So a motion, <laughs> everyone heard that a motion to, um, for the time being, shorten to 30 minutes for the great breakout group session. We can always check in and extend if need be. Seconds. All in favor? All opposed? All right, so 30 minutes. So we count off um, in groups of seven, um, and then they'll, that'll break everyone up. Oh. Sir? I just have a question. I, I am here, but I did not sign up to create a voice in the process, so I don't know whether that excludes me from being in a, in a group for this time. If you're not on the committee, I believe it does exclude you from that. There is public comment at the end for members of the public, so I had you weigh in there if that, that makes sense. So counting off uh, in groups of seven uh, to break everyone up. And when we're doing about our half hour of discussion, I really want it to be open floor for each of your group. Um, just some thoughts would be, in terms of discussion is, do the Scarborough schools have a problem that we need to address? It might sound like I'm kind of say, stating the obvious or asking the obvious question, but we're really getting it like square one. Um, if there's a problem, what is this committee to solve? Are we talking about a capacity issue, a security issue, a space issue? What is the information that this board needs um, to confirm a problem exists or to how best handle, give you one sec, how best to handle um, the problem. And if we need additional information, how best can we get it? Where can we get it from? Do we have any reservations on data provided by the schools? We're not there. That's just a couple quick thoughts uh, on what to discuss in your groups, but really open-ended for each of your groups. And when we're done with the breakout, um, each group, pick one person, kind of come up and give a summary presentation from each group. And yes, sir. Under the impression, based on the letter in 89 page thing that you sent, the business case, yep, uh, business, something on it. Yep. There was a letter from Bruno, superintendent of school, that said we were kind of looking at too specific. Ways of doing. Putting, getting buildings. Either three existing plus one new mm -hmm. or one huge eight three story. That's that's what that's what's in this 89 pages. And just not necessarily most it's the from the architects. So the, all of that's already been uh, laid out. So I'm assuming the town wants to head from one of those two directions. 
That's what we got to decide. Negative. Throw that business case out the window. Well, it's, a, it's a report that was done prior to the referendum. No. So the, the referendum got voted. This was done last year. Yeah, before November. So to go, to go back to what you're saying, sir. I didn't say it's got a stone. It is a path. Is that what the town or the superintendent wants us to call? We don't care what the superintendent wants us to call. So real quick, he's real not quick. even here. If I, if, I could, if I could get to your question, sir. So this is this is back to this is really back to square one. Solution talking about solutions, whether it be I'm just listing randomly, fourth school, consolidated school. Solutions are not what this meeting is going over tonight. This is Correct. square one, problem <laughs> identification, um, consensus among the group. So when you're talking about there's two paths, there's any number of paths that this committee wants to take. We're not shoehorned into it has to either be one of the two things that are in that business case. The business case was just to provide a bit of context in terms of what the school had presented, which was there were some enrollment numbers in there, some cost numbers, just kind of a big picture what was looked at a year ago, what was voted on, but no, we're not shoehorned into it. It has to be either of the two things that are in that business case. Well, what, was, what was looked at in 2017? The facilities study they're talking about? 2017 was another big thing like this. Correct. That was looking at it was what seven options A through right, A through F, something like that. So again, I know everyone wants to jump into solutions. Trust me, I want to too, but what we're talking about tonight is just it sounds like a kind of really basic question is like, do we have a problem? What's the problem we're gonna solve for? So let's so without further ado, I want to don't want to come to our time anymore. Let's count off by sevens. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two. All right, uh, go ahead and kind of come <laughs> in your groups. Um, <laughs> what's that? Yeah. 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 So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven,
What was um, I only know what the last thing was. Yeah. 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 That's all right. You go back. I'm scared of Okay, I got 5,000 steps. I'm ready to go. What's your name? Jack Craig. Jack? All right. Let's see. What's your name again? Jack? Oh, hey. Hey, hey. Just a second. Alyssa? Me. Don't worry about it. It's When I got into the numbers that they were trying to quote about why we had to have a school, about our growth oh potential there, um, oh, it became a bunch of other people to talk about that smart, I guess. But later on, in a different one, I found what they said. But that's like this many students this year, and we're ahead of grades. Yeah. So we're way behind. Trying to identify problems. And we want to Remember this town? I live in this town. I don't want to be able to watch you guys. I know this town has a lot of I think now at the same time, I work in a school. I work in a school. Our kids need to be able to watch I got to we're trying to try to keep them motivated to learn. Very good. Jack, do you want to go? Sure. In reading this argument case for the umpteenth time, the renovations to the three schools they show is based on a single story structure and two stories. And they make the expansion two stories. And I can see the provide a lot of No mention of renovating the house. In both cases, and the And that would accommodate almost all the needs for the sixth grade alone. It makes no mention of the sector as part of the renovation or the existing. Okay, now I don't know whether that's a structural issue. Uh, if the renovations discuss the growth, I'm not afraid to leave the I'm not afraid to leave the room. I'm not and having the staggered school yes. if you're on K through six on the same bus, yes. anyway, um, I believe the K through three happened probably Yeah, 
So they are new.
So you went through it. A school made of all portables that Scarborough had that sat next to Wentworth. So, right. like, we have to know our education as a teacher. Is really concerned about. I know that. Well done. Well done. I got to show you something so, I made, too. Okay. Okay. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. I'll, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you. That is. That is. So you know what I did. Yeah, well, we had one of the doctors saying to us, all of the students by year of age, by grade, I took it, put it in an Excel spreadsheet, and then put it in a center, aggregating it by the teachers. So like this gray one here is the high school enrollment. That's the middle school. Uh, Wentworth and then the elementary school so kids for, 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 for the last nine years. Yeah. 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 And you can see the yeah. 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 up and down, but it's not dramatic. The projection over the next 10 years is all up. What is that? Okay, so, yeah. so I'm going to take my turn now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 By the way, by the way, I forgot. I They don't have STEM spaces, so they can't do projects. Like they don't. Like I remember, we used to make like uh, 
play comes from yeah, right. know much. They can't do that in any of the primary schools because they don't have art space and they don't have kill theater. And by the way, I looked at the cave thing. The cave is crazy. The cave is like there's ponding on the roof, so they want to fix the green. Like we have like a pleasant hill, like leaks in the roof. You know? It's like they want to move the kill closer to the art room. Like the primary schools wouldn't have art room. Even have kills. So it's like, I mean, it's like different levels. Like, I completely understand why the cave would be on their So, like, I think we can learn something. We can learn, like, I don't know. Are you, 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 there is possible to do something. They are expanding. My, my point was, we're not here to actually find out what our peers and other towns are doing. Now we need to spend a huge amount of time, but I don't think I'm going to do that. She was told somewhere in the process that it was against him. <laughs> 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 Well, we need to get back. We need to back. So, what I was here, is there any sort of on the second block? So let's let's kind of bring it back. So uh, one thing I was trying to figure out is this capacity. So I just looked up like this is it. You know, standard VCL. This is me on a flight on Friday, just trying to make notes for myself. Okay. But so for primary schools, I looked at the business case or whatever. And you add it up, it's like six fifty. You gotta be in the You gotta be in the It's pretty much on Right. Yeah. This thing here is out of the This is the key thing out of that. This document, which is There's up above here. Sorry, I don't know. I know. I got to go to school in that, but I live over there. Down below there is the 10 year projection done by the experts. And it's also my to say, we go through the 111 pages for all kinds of reasons how they did this, you know, birth some of Oh, yeah, by the way, is it for So, this is what I mean. Yeah. Go for it. Um, sorry, so what were you saying? I found it pretty much at the right. Do we know the capacity of the without the portable? No, 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 this is this is with portable. Yeah, I, I'm wondering without it, it's going to be way lower. Rip down the portable tomorrow. It'd be way lower. Because we're talking about getting rid of the Possibly. I'm not sure I agree with it. Getting rid of a lot of all of them, but maybe getting rid of some of them. Some people say all of them. So, like, yeah, but keep going. But anyway, uh, what, what I saw is that pretty much at 90, 95% class, we had with the portables, we have portables last forever. Sure. So, if you look at the projection, by the projection, then it says we're going to be, because by 2028, it goes up to about 100%. So, that's not taking a so kind of an hour, like, if we just do best of it, which is just based on the So, I know what's going to be actually a good more list. So, we have some of us Yes. How units? So, they're based where people are bringing children to They did base of They did base of births, the top of births, they did housing, and they did COVID, and they did like housing. And so, first is the place, just, just perfect. Yeah. And so, I, I, I did a similar thing to what you made, which is uh, I took the first one with the patches, and then I said, all right, what are the numbers first grade or seventh grade? That's how they use that. Like, and we're the whole This is the whole projection where this is first. So, the next thing I was going to say is the best thing we can do right now is important to me. More or less, right. what are our main issues? The problem is, is the past six is years years the are we told that I'm in space? And then they're saying, well, the diversity is 
the broader strokes so that we can then take those items and use them in the same way. What do we do? Like, what literal materials do we do? Like, we just have more people. They're going to have more purse. We've been talking to our bills. It made This doesn't include, like, everything down. All that was like, it doesn't have to be even higher. So not having to use this. <laughs> 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 my, husband, my husband wants a girl, but he only makes boys. I went after three. I went after three. That's reason enough. And my youngest came in first class in the second round. I think that all the stuff we now we don't know Boston. So and that that may be extremely true, but there may be other kids where at this point our kids. I don't know if they're down. Yeah. 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 Ye
and every 250. So that's like capacity for 200 to 350. Yeah. So that's really like a yeah. number. Yeah, the numbers increase a little Then I guess the last question is whether we want to have. That's the so I wonder when you saw your graph and it was pretty Did you believe it was going to go? Which is, which I think, then you start to talk about so that chart that I created. Surely, because when I see charts like this, so we would want to do like and I would say projecting out that we have to. But is it likely that it's going to be more diluted than the projection? Uh, this suggests that even though the town has grown dramatically in the last nine years, the number of students in school has not. According to the data that we got, who knows? I, I'm sure that you know the school system and the superintendent would know that. My member uh, spokesperson just So again, attempting to keep upper upper high. We're all going to go back. We're going to chat about it. People are going to come up with different things. So, so rather than trying to solve the problem, let's just identify them. So we can look at space by looking at how we treat there's one that they have in Are you talking about the yeah, yeah, they have they made this? I didn't even they must know. Have like That's so old. I didn't even know. It's in one of the uh, they had a projection there. Of what it was going to be in 2020. Exactly. And how what? Well, that's what it is. They're a little bit. They didn't, they didn't have 20, they didn't have 25. And they were a little bit under. It's at 640 now. You know, the national game was by 20 in two years. You're talking about actually for Wentworth. They were sure that they were dead on. Well, back in my time. I've seen the beginning of the training. Cool. Do you think that there are so the question then is not if we're going to grow. I'd say you understood the Well, I think it's a good point to say that the total number might actually be the balance of that doesn't mean you can go primary school. Why not? Put all the high schoolers out in the three schools. Why not? They'll be fine. So, uh, I, for me, it was capacity seemed like a problem. Uh, because I don't have some trust in the projection of that. Uh, for sure. But that, that's like a sub. The second one was security. We know what's been going on with all of these different things that go on. Like, I think they need to have secure campuses, furniture festivals. That for me would seem like a problem that we should try to solve. Are, are the schools secure now? If I went to Pleasant Hill, would you say it's secure or not? I could not walk into eight quarters. I could not walk into eight quarters. Yeah, see, I don't know. I haven't been in these. Schools. I think some are secure. Right. Yeah, no, like eight quarters definitely is secure. I have to be busted. And then at a certain time, that drop off, that back door locks. I can't get in. That's pretty good. Wentworth. I think Wentworth is locked down. So we need to get the back. But I agree with you, you know, people, security, and how to get in. Yeah. 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 I think we're going to do a school tour in the next couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Right up. We yeah. Yeah. The other thing is, when we looked at uh, the business case of space, I don't know if you saw all the pictures of the storage and hallways. Like, um, yeah. It's kind of a mix between them. They were storing things in restrooms. Learn a lot for music. 
It's a story stuff in all ways is not ideal. Right? And right? And right? And right? This is not ideal. We need to get out of my classroom. So it was done. That was my question. I'm not going to do any. You're talking about space. I don't know. 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 I I'm 
I agree with you 100%. I would rather my uh, my son be taught under a tree by a good teacher than has to be in a good classroom by a good teacher. But then the teacher you have first time what they want. It's a portable problem for them. Maybe they'll say, yeah, I don't want to be in a portable. Or maybe if you can rope the PC out of it two years out of three. I don't know. Are we talking about teaching like like anyone can just walk into a portable and break it off? I have no idea. I got it. Since time, I believe that there has to be. Yeah. Are there, are there actually some members? I have no idea. I'm talking about the question. So if you're a sixth grader, you have to go outside. You know, I think you're probably going to have to get out of class. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
when your child's turning into an ocean, and I was like, No, it was like a computer because you're like, Well, and I like to see that coming all right, everybody, everybody good? All right, I'm going to address, address the Zoom folks. Um, so we have, we do have a technical limitation for those on Zoom where we can't put them in a breakout room because of how we're in a, a webinar style setup. So what I would like to do, since I think we have at this point, Tommy said three or four committee members, um, after we do the readouts, um, give the people on Zoom a chance to weigh in. So I apologize to the Zoom people. I know it's not ideal. Um, we do the best we can. So hopefully we'll get something out of the breakout. All right, um, why don't we go just to spice it up in reverse order. So group number seven can, be, can go first. All right, super. Um, we had uh, several things that we talked about. One, the first thing was uh, trying to figure out what were the technical aspects of the earlier proposal um, versus the marketing? Uh, what, you know, were there issues uh, related to, you know, the actual proposal or was it the way the proposal was presented and, and uh, possibly not understood? We also felt that the enrollment figures need to be updated, validated, um, that, Already, the enrollment figures are for this year are, are way out of whack with what, what was projected. And the 2020 census had not uh, been released yet. And so we know that that information needs to be updated. We talked about what is the actual, what's the scope of the problem? How severe is the space shortage? And what are the other issues? What are the essentials? What do the, do the teachers and what are the schools not able to provide that the teachers would like to provide? Um, is it even without um, an increasing enrollment, are there issues that need to be addressed in the elementary schools? The cost is important. Whatever solution we come up with has to be affordable. Don't want to repeat mistakes of the earlier proposal. We need to understand, um, going back to one of the earlier points that I made, the essential things that need to be provided by the schools, we would like to understand what better, what are the services that we're required to provide? What are the special services that are required that, um, that is really uh, forcing us to make changes in our schools? Uh, and what are the obligations um, of the state, why is the state not paying for any of our, any of this proposal, any of the updates that we're, we'll be making? And um, the state has just reopened the uh, competitive process. It has not been open since 2017 when we applied and we were 34th on the list. So are we gonna apply um, for this new round of funding? <coughs> One thing I forgot to mention, just because we do have seven groups, your, your time was fine, no issues. Um, try to keep it to around five minutes per group, so it's going to be about 35 minutes. <laughs> Thank you. For number six? Good question. Good question for, yeah, go ahead. Just a quick question. You said that the, uh, the enrollment is skewed. Which way, up or down? Uh, the there was a projection that the um, enrollment for K through two would be 240, I mean, 643 students and it's 610 this year, 611. So we are coming in lower than what was projected. Group six, we, uh, we started the first question, do we have a problem? And we have consensus that we do have a problem. It's so it's a good start. <laughs> the second thing that we could agree to was we would like to minimize the use of portables in the community. The third thing we could agree to was that the K2 is a problem we should solve for. The fourth thing is that we believe that the middle school is a problem we should solve for. And the fifth thing is, is we would like a field trip. And then we started to talk enrollment, but 
He ran out of time. So those are the five takeaways from our group. This for five. Yeah, so so we tried to keep it uh, focused on those questions as well. So of course, do we have a problem? Yes. Um, what is that problem? Um, we looked at it from uh, there's a capacity issue, there's a security issue, uh, there's efficiencies both in education, just lost education time, moving from portables to classrooms and things like that, and then also the buildings themselves and the efficiencies lost by you know the old technologies. Um, we talked a lot about portables as well as both a temporary solution to these problems, but um, not the long-term fix and the fact that portables themselves have problems, rodents and things like that. So, so they're not the solution, but they are potentially a, a temporary solution. And then also programs and services. So what um, one of the things that we thought was, was missing from the studies was what programs, the, the, what programs and services are we not providing that a, a modern schools should be providing? Um, we don't know what those are. Um, and then a nod to uh, the funding and budgetary considerations. Um, to, to your point, right? Whatever solution we come up with has to, make, has to be fiscally responsible. Um, and then your last question about information needs. Um, I think first and foremost, uh, consolidated enrollment data. Um, the data is really broken up. So trying to find one source that shows historic and future projections, so through current. Um, so uh, something that has um, the historic data, the capacity of each school, and then um, and the projections kind of all laid out in one document that's easy to digest so you don't have to try to put things together. Um, other things uh, that we'd like to see is an information need as um, the wants and needs of, of the school. So what are the must haves in a good, you know, modern school building and what are the nice to haves in a, in a school building? Um, and then what do, what do current, you know, new school best practices are, right? I think um, all of us in the room went to school probably at least more than 10 years ago. So what's changed in education today that um, we, we don't know that schools should be doing today from technology and all of those other pieces. Um, and then a field trip too. We all agree we need to go see these schools for our, with our own eyes. Uh, group four. Hi. Um, so a few of ours are might be a little bit of an overlap or repeat of some that have been discussed or will be discussed. But uh, we try to keep the three points. Um, one, uh, Nevin King always just previously said, uh, safety and security issues. Uh, physical secure access to the buildings with students entering schools and potentially not encountering an administrative uh, body there immediately as they come in. Um, that was a, a concern for us with, with, uh, with the school um, buildings that are there now. The next one was the current, um, again, the current format of the town's districts. Maybe that could be re reviewed again. If there are any efficiencies that the schools have been here for a long period of time, um, maybe that, that could that could be uh, looked at in the future as uh, possible to others, as part of the solution of other solutions that would be involved in this. Uh, and then lastly, uh, an, an existing uh, analysis of the existing spaces, rather provide a new analysis of the existing spaces in the schools and try to maximize any efficiency that we can there. Not a solution, but then a part of a wider array of other solutions. Uh, All right, so we were able to agree that there is a problem. So that was good stuff. Um, <laughs> we focused um, a lot of our time on the space issue and um, kind of just many different aspects of it. Um, we did agree that um, portables um, should be moved away from. Um, Big concerns between the K through two and sixth grade, mostly um, concerning privacy issues like um, the nurses' room um, and also the very limited um, access to bathrooms in the sixth grade, um, and particularly like the music class issues with them not having their own space and how enriching that could be for a child. Um, 
And then for kind of the things that we would need to look at for space, um, there was um, addressing whether OSHA or there was any federal regulations about how much um, square footage per kid um, is advised or something to move towards. Um, and then just an inventory on kind of all the classrooms and, you know, what our current capacity is. Um, another issue that we kind of could all agree upon was safety issues. Um, things like lacking classroom locking doors, outdoor, um, kind of having to walk outdoor at such a young age to get from spot A to spot B in the kind of current class school climate, I'm trying to find a nice way to say that. Um, and then just doors being unsecure, uh, being an issue. Um, for the enrollment data, um, we would want a kind of closer look at that. There has been a rapid growth in our town um, and we would wanna kind of look closer at those numbers and address um, kind of how they were formulated, were they considering the kind of rapid development that has occurred in the past few years, who is filling those homes, um, whether it be small families, um, older families without children in the school system, things like that. Um, and kind of like what was earlier referenced, how the numbers have compared to the projection towards reality over the past few years. Um, and just in general that the middle school's an issue. Uh, number two. Right, so uh, we started with the question of what everyone's reaction to the homework was of going through all the different documents. And I think there was a pretty large majority in our group that really just found it a difficult exercise because they found the business case to be frankly biased and funneling towards, towards one option. And so it was a really difficult to kind of disentangle uh, the smoke from the fire. What was the actual need versus what might be kind of the marketing, I think somebody else said. And when it came to us of what was the problem, there seemed to be an agreement that capacity is most likely a problem. So looking back, it looks like the capacity hasn't really changed. The enrollment hasn't really changed over the past 10, 15 years. But uh, those are kind of looking back. Looking forward, you have to look at leading indicators like births, and that seems to have gone up by about 30%. As we said, do births and the number of first graders seven years later match up? They tend to do. Um, and so then it was saying, okay, well, what does that mean? And so, you know, we have a certain capacity today. It's around 80, 90% of our primary schools. What's it gonna happen when that goes up 30%? We're gonna be under in about four or five years. And so we think capacity is likely a problem, but we need to look at it. We need to look at projections beyond 10 years um, to make sure that we're, we're confident with that. So capacity was our first problem. Second, security was a real problem. We know all the things that happen and making sure that you have uh, secure access to the campus and people can't get around to other different areas that they have to go through an area that's, that's secure is, was very important to our group. Uh, the third, we asked about portables. Is portables a problem? And actually, I'd say that our group said, no, portables aren't really a problem. Lack of space is kind of a problem. So uh, we thought shared gym cafeteria is kind of a problem. Uh, not, not having dedicated space for art or music or or. STEM things limits the amount of programming that you can have. And we can all think about what we did in primary schools when we grew up, some of those things aren't available to our schools. And we think that that is something that is worth solving. Um, and I think a fourth thing that came up that is kind of hidden under all this uh, was pre-K. Uh, if you looked at the business case uh, for the four school options, that was part of it. And uh, you know, maybe not everyone remembers, but you know, four-year-olds are not babies. Four-year-olds really should be in school. And it's very difficult actually to find school and pre-K for them outside of the system. And so that was one thing that we thought maybe isn't a problem for everybody, but should be on the, the pallet of things we talked about. So, and last, but certainly not least, uh, group number one. Okay. So we spent a lot of time saying, yes, there is a problem. Um, our biggest thing with two problems, K to three, and we definitely think sixth grade sounds like there's a problem um, in capacity that there's that have been affordable this whole time. Um, one good point that we had made was that each person in the town probably speculates on what the problem is on their own individual basis. So then we want to know how can we all agree and get the town to agree on what's going to be proposed. Um, 
So that is a problem. We think that the parents and the staff feel there's a need, but we don't know what that is. So we're hoping the survey as something we need will tell us that. We're not really sure if the kids feel there's a problem. Um, and I think that just comes down to really good teaching and um, how things are presented to children. This is what they know, but should that be what they know? Um, we personally all agreed that we thought the problem of portables were a problem. I don't have specifics. Um, some of us have history in the portable, some of us don't. So we didn't get into that too much. We do think that numbers are high overall. And we were talking about the enrollment um, exceeds capacity in the next four years of what the projected enrollment is. Again, we need to find that out. We did ask questions of where are we getting these numbers? And um, we could look into that some more. We do think that the problem is that the current buildings like the primary schools were built not to have or fit the needs of what we need now, meaning we can't go up a floor. Um, they don't have, they have really high maintenance problems. And um, I just think there's more there. So we, we didn't list it all. Um, we said that we also mentioned pre-K, um, that we know that the existing reports and recommendations mention pre-K, but it's just not then. That's coming from the state. The state has asked for pre-K in all schools. Every year it does get cut out or doesn't get approved, but it's coming. And also um, they're working with CDS, Child Development Services for three and four year olds to meet the needs of those kids. And a lot of those kids have specific IEP, individualized um, plans. And if that goes through into the system, now you're talking even more space because you have more adults with each child. Um, and then the needs are greater. So I, that is in the pipe work every year. So with the possibility that it could happen. And I think if pre-K was in Scarborough, we were saying that probably a lot of people would want their kids in the pre-K system because they can't find early childhood education for them. Um, we thought security was a really big issue, especially the primary schools, two of them don't have extra locking doors, a security issue. There's also parking is an issue, the safety of that, where the kids are walking, where the parents are walking, the drive-throughs, um, drop-off, pick-up. And bottom line is, the dollar amount was way too high for the town to approve, we think. That's why it might have gotten rejected. We want to know what is a dollar that people would pay for if they feel like they're getting a good return on investment. And we really want, hopefully, the town survey will help us find that information out. Um, and we need better communication between us and the town so we can get this information across. We did not discuss how it was presented previously. We're moving and talking about what we should do in the future, and hopefully we'll do a better job of that. Um, let's say, I think that's it. Okay. Group one, uh, Tom, do we have anyone on Zoom that is raising hands? No, there are three committee members. No one has raised their hand. That everyone that's kind of spoke email a summary to the leadership team so we can incorporate them into the minutes. Sure. Can you say a little louder so everyone can? Yeah. For those that got up and spoke, you can just send a note to the leadership team so we can incorporate them into the minutes of the meeting. It would really help us. One on Zoom still? No. Um, okay. <clears throat> um, all right. Are you guys, we're welcome to stay in groups or go back to our seats. Just we have couple things left on the agenda, um, whatever you prefer, open whatever. We're all seated, all right, we'll just stick with, her, we'll just stick with the groups we're in. All right, um, all right, so from what I'm hearing, it sounds like, correct me if I'm wrong, we're all in agreement that there is a problem with the schools. There's 
different <coughs> uh, different takes on what the problems are, what the highest priority is, but we are all at least in agreement on that. So I guess next steps, opening it up to the group a bit. Um, I heard guilt trips. I heard a lot about trying to get some more data. I'm opening it up to the floors in terms of discussion on next steps. I know there's a community survey out for voters and community members. I would love to hear from the teachers. Um, I thought that was really absent the last round. Um, we heard from principals um, who were part of the committee, uh, but I would love to see an anonymous survey of teachers. I've been a teacher myself. I would love to give my, not in Scarborough, but they don't always ask, what do you need to the teachers? Um, what is your current class size? What is the maximum amount you feel comfortable teaching up to? Um, special education, what are the needs? Do we not have enough space to give kids proper speech, PT, OT? Like what, what are the concrete bullet point list of needs? Um, I would love to hear from the educators. Um, I think our committee could learn a lot from them. Did everyone hear that? I saw a couple other hands and maybe I didn't see a couple of hands. I, I'm, I'm for both. I'm, I'm for both. I'd, li I'd like to, to go on a field trip, but I'd, I, I have kind of a jaded opinion of going on field trips where there's the opportunity to stage the result. But, you know, but, but, I, but I, I would like to see it. And, and I think that's good. And, and I think it would be critical to, 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 and I don't know, I know we don't have a lot of money, but Nick has assured me that he'll reach into his pocket. But I think given the miss on the first year's enrollment of the enrollment study, and they missed by a lot, 35, you know, 40 students, that somebody needs to explain that miss. What caused, what caused the miss? Was it the assumptions? Was it the the, uh, the the level that was accepted, you know, for, for the projection, and, and maybe we maybe we spend a few bucks and have the person who did the study either update it or come in and explain it to us or whatever. Because I think if you say in the first year, which you knew what two of the three classes, what was going to matriculate out of two of the three classes, you only had to project what K was. So we, so we missed K by 35, 40 students or whatever. That's a lot of, that's a big miss. Yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> there's two things that I would uh, like to have further depth on. Um, one is that the, um, the study really conglomerates a whole bunch of issues and data into talking points. And I'd actually kind of like to, to pull that back apart. Like, um, Asking the teachers, I you know I kind of like an individualized list from each principal about their building, in order what are the problems. You know, we for example we've heard that the uh, you know, the boilers are a problem in the K to two schools. Well, I don't know are is one of them new and two of them old and only two of them would need to be replaced hypothetically. I don't know, um, but I'd love to see from each school an individualized list of the problems and their priority. Um, and secondly, I, I would like to suggest that we look a little bit further afield um, in terms of what town needs can be incorporated with little or no cost into whatever solution this is. Um, my first thought is, uh, you know, community services before and after school care. Um, you know, there's um, adult learning that happens in the schools in the evenings and weekends, basketball camp, yada, yada, yada. Um, are we solving that need, even though you know this is a school committee or a committee to solve the school problem? See a hand over here. No. Yes, sir. Um, I'd like to know from the teachers, or probably more efficiently the principals, um, what could you do with your space if you got rid of portables? If you got rid of portables. If you got rid of the portables, what could you do in your space? I mean, with the space that with, this, with the, the brick and mortar space of those existing buildings, uh, Pleasant Hill School, Blue Point School, if you got rid of portables and you got those kids into another building, what would you do with the classrooms that you have right now? What could you do with special education space? How could you maneuver the buildings 
with a smaller number of students in those existing buildings. So just, just imagine we had a fourth elementary school. And we could yeah. Put a portion of those students somewhere else. I don't know who that was. My wife, I swear. You got somebody's approval. <laughs> are you saying if, if the portables were removed, are the primary schools adequate? Yeah. And what would it take to make them adequate? You're talking about, with a, just so I'm understanding you correctly, you're talking about hypothetical fourth school. Yeah. How would the existing three be able to meet needs for programming and somehow we need to get to a number we need to get to an understanding of are these buildings even viable? So I understand it's not necessarily part of our purview, but I can't get my brain to wrap around the fact that if we can't control growth properly in this town, we're never going to be able to solve this issue. If you look at what's going on in Cape Elizabeth, one of the, there was an article that came out where they talked about how trying to do everything at once may not even be the best solution because you don't know what's going to happen 50 years. You can plan for the best, but if you don't have the, you know, the right plan in place, it could ultimately 50 years crumble. They're back at the same spot. So I'd actually like to have a better saying our rate of growth ordinance. I know there's been a lot of changes. It used to be called something different. I like to know how that is going to help slow the sort of impact to our school system because we're talking about these buildings, but it's also services. And so if we can't offer services because we don't have big enough buildings because we have too much growth here, maybe we need the town council to go back and reevaluate it and say, hey, we need to slow this a little bit more so we can do this over a longer period of time that has maybe a less of an impact financially on the taxpayers. Can't guarantee that it'll fall within our purview, but certainly could be have two counselors yeah. here to, to talk to, not to not to throw them under the bus, but uh, always happy. <laughs> but no, it's open to any all ideas. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'd like to add in to just the principals giving us a status of what their the status of their buildings are, but I'd like to hear from Todd, and I don't know his last name. He's hard of he's head of maintenance for all the schools, and I'd like to hear. A breakdown of what his costs are for each of the individual buildings and what some of the major issues are as far as what he's trying to correct now. Uh, and we've got a chance to look at the numbers back from 17 and compare them to today and see if these buildings are really going as, down as fast as they say. Todd Jackson is the facilities director. Mr. Fett, I noticed in the study that the Hamlin people did. They never once mentioned anything about Wentworth. And yet Shannon Lindstrom said that that was designed to be expanded to eight to 10 classrooms. Yet that was never part of any mention in there at all. And I noticed that in their plans for renovations, they had a one-story building and a two-story building. It always amazed me why they didn't make both of them two stories and make the existing building two stories. That would kind of take care of an awful lot of things. And yet they never looked at that. You know, why do that? And then you can eliminate a fourth school. Any other hands I saw? Up? Yes, sir. It just occurred to me that nobody talked about land, land availability, um, space availability, you know, how many acres is required for, you know, per school, things like that. Uh, I know there's some data in here about acreage up on the sites, but what's available in town? What are the options for, for land acquisition? I, I would go one step further and say what's available right within our existing school campus where we already have access roads and we already have the infrastructure there to support schools versus buying a piece of raw land and having to, you know, preload it, you know, fill it provide access roads, provide utility, you know, it, which then starts to drive the cost up. We have a campus with space in it. Why are we looking out around the rest of town? I guess my question is, how do we turn this into action? We have seven different ideas of what the priorities are. It sounds like capacity was a theme. Is that a uh, Maybe a subcommittee that looks into that, or uh, security seem to be one. Like, how, how do you how do you think about how do you think about that? I think that's when we talk about next steps. Yeah, that's we we're going to have to look into that, um, informing subcommittees and deciding how we're going to break that up. One one second. Yeah, sure. Um, 
just the gist of what I'm getting is a lot of questions that we want answered as a body. Um, one of the things we talked about in leadership meeting shortly after our first meeting was trying to compile a series of questions, have them sent over to when we're talking about with the principals, um, facilities, as Rick said. Um, <clears throat> getting a list of questions ahead, getting them over to the people that need to answer them and trying to have them come in to address them with us. Thoughts on that? I mean, that's, I, I, from what I'm hearing on feedback is where it's a lot about need more information on this, more information on that. I think that's a, I think that's a great next step. I do agree field trip's important, but I think if we get as much info as possible, field trip can come at some point after that. This is it a worthwhile uh, exercise, Rory, to, to take the, the seven lists that we've got that are all gonna make it into the minutes, right? And kind of shake it down and call it down into the several main categories and then let everybody on this committee rank those. I like that idea. You know, I'm not opposed to that. And then, and then re-aggregate all the ranking and say, as a committee, we think security is the most important. Or we think, you know, you've got, it started at 74, it's probably down to 65 now or whatever. And it'll be, you know, 50 in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Especially if they have to listen to me. But, uh, but, 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 you know, we got a fairly broad spectrum here. Um, and I think if, if, if everybody had a chance to rank um, the, the issues that, that, then we could get an idea as collective as a group, what do we think the importance of the various issues are? I like that idea. I second that completely, but I feel like I need answers to all of these questions first uh, to be able to make an accurate decision on security or enrollment or you know as my priorities and if you if you wait it's kind of like waiting for um <laughs> it's kind of like waiting for the next book bucked out there Nick. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of like waiting for the next budget to get some money so that we've got an engineer who can look and say we can put a second story on some of these buildings you know it may not have been what the previous group thought they wanted to do, so therefore they were totally good. But if, if you wait, how far down the road are you gonna to wait to get some of these answers before you start to get a feel for what the group thinks collectively is important? Not and I, I understand- Before the conversation. No, and I understand we, what you're- We can get a lot of these answers, hopefully in a week or two weeks time from school administration, at least, you know, the lion's share of those answers. Real, real quick, I'm gonna jump in real quick. Yeah, um, sure. I see both of your points. Um, I don't see why those can't be done coextensively. I think we could get an initial impression from the committee based on what we're distilling out of this. And then as the information comes in, again, there's nothing wrong with doing a follow-up and say, oh, you know, security was ranked number four. And after we get a better idea of best practice, oh, that's going up to number one. So I think I think they can be done coextensively. Truth be told, I have saw a couple of hands over here. Yep. Um, did the my question is, did the town survey go out yet? And if not, when is it going? And when do we expect it back? To defer to the final, counselors. Final draft of the cover letter was sent yesterday. This morning. Yeah, the final draft of the cover letter is done. My understanding is it's still being field, whatever they do internal to test it, and then that process takes another week, and then they'll. Be ready to mail. So, Is there a date for it to come back though? That's so we know how long. What's our time frame? I it guess. depends on how quickly we reach that statistically valid number. Um, if people respond to the survey really quickly, then the survey is considered validated more quickly, and then we can get the results. You know, I would say in all likelihood, it's at least a month out to have yeah. the results okay. to be clear. One thing we could do in the interim, but we wouldn't do it through the you know, scientific study with the consultants, but we could share the, the final draft with this committee. I just personally, I'm interested in all of you taking that survey and having us uh, look at those results. That's great. That's great. <laughs> I saw a hand up. Sorry, I didn't mean to upstage you, but it seems too, too good an opportunity to pass up. Um, my point was just very similar to what Karen had said is that I think it makes sense to prioritize 
our list, but we also need to know what the priority for the people in our town is in order to make sure that we come up with something that is going to pass, uh, you know, in a town vote, because that's, we've got one problem with space in our schools and we have another problem with getting everyone in town to agree on what the solution is. Um, one thing not to wrap around to the communications board subcommittee or anything um, from earlier, but um, I don't, I haven't met anyone in town that is aware this survey is coming out, which um, may impede its response rate um, or how seriously people take it or the level of kind of time and dedication they really put into it. Um, so put it to the communications committee because I don't know the best one um, of like increasing word of mouth or using Facebook the leader or something in order to get people to respond and respond quickly and understand where those results are kind of having their impact. It sounds like the cover letter might cover that too, but um, I at least personally haven't known anyone that knows it's coming. So if people know to look for it, they may be more interested in doing it. So all your neighbors start yeah. Yeah. Well, What was the population that the sample was selected, is going to be or has been selected? The only thing I know is that it's it's through a third party company. That no, they, but I mean, it's, sent it's to something four, statistic. Sent, yeah. sent to four thousand households, and they they need at least six hundred responses back. So what, how, what's the population <laughs> that the four thousand households were? Were they registered voters? Were they randomly fair records? Were they randomly selected? Randomly selected from what? What's the population? That we randomly selected the 4,000 households. We're kind of getting into the experts' yeah. business right now. They are giving us a statistically valid survey, so they will take. Yeah, but, the we had, we, but we had to give them uh, some genders. They will consider that. We, we, we had to give them right. something to select from. It's the tax rolls or what? I mean, it's a, no, it's the whole community. It's every address. So it's every right. address. So every the address bar address across the street has an equal chance of. I'll give you the exact answer. Your PO box for my business that I run into some point. All right, question, <laughs> question in the back. Yes. It's every address. For question, comment. Question. Yes, sorry. Um, I was just going to say that uh, with the survey going out right now, the school's website, the building pro uh, project, has not been updated. And I've had a couple of people ask me, how do we find out what's going on? And you have to go to, you have to click on school board, and then you go to committees and go to standing committees, and then you find this and it just would make sense before this survey gets out there to clean that up so yeah. see exactly what's what's happening i agree it's not to scare anyone off of joining the communication subcommittee but it's it's a huge it's a huge hurdle and uh if anyone here has a communication degree please please let us know uh, i saw another hand over yes i was just going to kind of piggyback what we were saying about communications committee but I know social media isn't like the end all be all, although a lot of people think it is now, but I think if we came up with a list in here of kind of what our groups are saying of based on our personal experiences, this is what we think are some of the top things that we as a community can agree on. That's why this didn't pass, but our concerns and we project that out there. If we have like a Facebook page of saying like, this is the current Scarborough community board meeting. So, you know, we would like your feedback. Can you take this quick poll? I think that could give us some in-time information and it's not official results, but it could reach a lot more people. We could start promoting saying, this um, is coming in the mail, take a look for it, go to this website. If you feel like doing that sort of paper, I think we could really push it and promote it and get out ahead of that and reach a lot more people that way. What's the interface between this committee and the school board and the school administration? The, the school board has two representatives that are on the leadership team. They're just not here tonight due to a scheduling conflict. Um, and then they have as uh, representatives, superintendent, assistant superintendent, forgetting a couple, facilities director. Facilities director. Um, so this, the direct, to get to your question, is a direct interface with members of the school board, members of the school administration. We do have a remote attendee. Let's go to let's go to Zoom. Yeah, I, I just have a quick question. Um, if you guys are doing a survey, who? How did you pick who is actually conducting the survey, and 
how did you decide on what kind of questions to ask? Uh, so my understanding, I'm, I'm going to defer to the town council chair on that one. Uh, yeah, so this was a joint effort between the Board of Education and the town council. Uh, from the town council side, April Sider and I as leadership, we sat at the table to help draft questions. And then from the school board side, their communications, which is Carolyn Gammon, right? And Leanne uh, Casalonis. I'm sorry, and Jill, I'm sorry, and Jillian. Right? Jillian and Shannon. Shannon. That's right. And Shannon stepped in for <clears throat> Carolyn, which Carolyn couldn't be there. So that's how it was kind of a leadership from each of the boards um, came together, sat down, drafted those questions, brought it to the larger group, which included uh, our town manager, our superintendent of schools, assistant superintendent, our communications director in the town, and then ETC, the professionals of our company. So it was really a very larger group effort. The goal was to create a survey that A, tried to understand better why it failed, but also looked ahead, asking questions about what would you support. Um, and that is to try to get you a broad swath of information to use here as we form our next steps. We want you to be well informed of what we think the community would support. How does that, how do those results jive with how you feel you have information and needs and wants? They're gonna have to overlap. You have to make them work together. So that that was the, the drive and the purpose behind it and the people involved. Okay, thank you. Anyone else on Zoom? Time? I can't see. Oh, sorry. No. Any other questions? I know we're we're getting a little late into the night, but I'm sir. I it's just uh I was just kind of curious to know, I'd like to hear from folks in the committee over the course of time, what out of the box different ideas do you guys have to propose um for different uh building ideas uh beyond what was already proposed uh, uh uh, K2 building, um, renovation to the middle school. What, what other ideas are out there? I was hoping to find out from the members of the, um, the leadership team where, what neighborhoods do you live in? And if you have kids in school, uh, because it seemed like from what little I know that Blue Point School is represented um, quite a bit. And I, additionally, I have a concern that there are no, that everyone who's on this committee has kids or they have a recent graduate and that there are no seniors on this committee at all. Who's a senior? On this committee? On the I mean, on the leadership uh. team. <laughs> We elected him. We elected him, and there's a pretty good uh, mix here. <laughs> you're doing great. This will make me a senior in, in a few weeks. Of being here. Um, I mean, speaking for myself, I I have a seven year old that's a first grader in eight corners, and I have a four soon to be ish four year old daughter who will be in kindergarten in eighteen ish months. And assuming I'm not moving, which I don't plan to, uh, she'll be going to eight corners as well. Uh, I have a two and a four-year-old. My four-year-old will be in kindergarten at Blue Point. Um, so I'm a Blue Pointer. Um, and I'm in the best scenario. I can go. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I, I have four children. Um, I have an eighth grader, a sixth grader who is currently going to school in the portables. Uh, I have a third grader at Wentworth and I have a kindergartner at Blue Point. Charlie, I have uh, three kids. One started in eighth grade at the middle school and is now graduated to college. And then I have uh, one current seventh grader um, and one current ninth grader. Both of whom came through uh, Blue Point, right? Blue Point. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I've got three kids, one uh, in eighth grade, one is a freshman, and one is a junior. And they all went through Blue Point. Also, Blue Point uh, second grader and a fifth grader. Kindergartner at Blue Point and a one year old. Can I ask the concern of the Blue Point? I just I think that um, people have different experiences. If you if you went if you had kids who went to Blue Point or Pleasant Hill, 
you have a real neighborhood school, but if you have kids who are eight corners, you're not walking to school. So it's a different feel. And, um, and then my concern about um, seniors, I'm just worried uh, that you're gonna, I don't want this committee to have a proposal that gets voted down again. I want to feel confident whatever proposal goes forward, we all agree this is gonna pass. And um, hopefully with as many seniors on the big committee as we have, our voices will be heard. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of address this with my smaller group too um, and kind of stressing, we're really as a leadership team trying to not do too much planning outside of the larger committee. We do set agenda points. We do, you know, meet in order to kind of be able to functionally move as a committee. But what we don't do is kind of get together and say, you know, debate four primaries, three primaries, one consolidated. We really do want this whole committee to feel like they're coming right along with us um, and that we respect everyone's views. Um, I don't know if the rest of the leadership team would agree with that, but we've yes. we've made that push. <laughs> What's that? Yes, okay. I agree. Yeah, you know, we're, we're trying to guide the process, but we're not trying to own the process and make you guys feel like community representations to our committee. Um, we're just trying to do as limited as we do without the larger body um, because I guess, yeah, we do represent a different, different age group and um, uh, I guess even one kind of towards a certain school. Um, yeah, the, the leadership, I mean, I'm just speaking, trying to speak on behalf of the leadership, it's that we're here to just help not even steer the ship, so to speak, as it sounds like we're driving the agenda. It's to just get everyone facilitated working together. And I want to hear from any of the seniors on the committee. We're going to hear from a public comment from a gentleman who's here. Um, yes, go ahead. Um, I respectfully hear what you say about the seniors. I'm a senior myself. Uh, but last time we met, we had an open floor for anyone who wanted to volunteer to be on the committee and get voted on. And I think, no offense to the one senior, I think, who actually said they would do it, but no other seniors stood up and said they wanted to be on the committee. So I feel like that's why we have on the leadership committee. That's we got who stood up. I didn't stand up to be part of it. Um, so I, I just think it's one of those things that we already made those decisions and we had our opportunity. So I think it's to, we have our way, but we can voice our opinions in, in our, all of our groups. Looking to you, Mr. Hayes, a public comment, I promise. It's coming soon. Um, all right. I know we're getting a little bit past our eight o'clock time we were targeting. So in terms of next steps, the leadership committee is going to uh, leadership teams in the meet after this meeting to try to kind of put together some next steps. Um, some of the feedback I had received kind of separately in email, um, it's about Monday meetings, um, not working. I mean, with a 70 something committee, <clears throat> no matter what day, what time we pick, there's gonna be issues people being able to attend. Some of the feedback I received was, does it always have to be a Monday? Um, we went with Monday, Two weeks after the first one, just because we had great attendance at the first one, Monday seems to work well. I'm putting it out there. If there's a day that tends to work better for the entire group, I'm open to entertaining that. Um, I just know that it's kind of no matter what day, unless magically all 70 something of us can agree on Saturday at 3 p.m. happens to work. I'm already seeing kicking ads. Um, so I'm just putting that out there. The, the tentative plan was to continue with Mondays, but if we feel like that's going to disproportionately not represent a good chunk of the committee, that can be looked at as well. Real quick before we, uh, I guess, move on, um, who are we emailing? I guess all the uh, scribes and secretaries from all seven groups, who are we emailing our notes to? Send it to the leadership, the BCLT at scarboroughschools.org, I think. Dot org. Um, <clears throat> that will go to everyone on the leadership team. Um, all right. Could yes. we, my understanding was we were meeting once a month and I think our charge is 
requires a lot more than that, but can we get the schedule going out to May 15th, which is the current goal, just for planning purposes. I know like my schedule, I'd like to know what Mondays we're meeting moving forward. If it isn't a Monday, what is it? Cause I'll need to make adjustments. Yeah, absolutely. We're trying to do better about that. We have the first couple of weeks is kind of putting things together and plugging leaks where they're popping up, but certainly committed to a better timeline. Well, Rory, we're meeting once a week though, aren't we? I'm going to have to talk about that. I mean, is that something that works? I have to, what you guys said last week. I know that's, so we're up against when we're talking about what the committee was charged with, with the May 15th deadline um, to have a recommendation, the joint school town council. Um, so we have to factor that in too. I, to be honest, the once a month, that's the first I've heard of it. Maybe I missed that in the initial. Once a month as a large group, once a month additionally as a subcommittee is just what I heard. But okay, fair enough. Um, and if I, it's not, what is it? I think I, my initial thought is it's going to be front loaded to get us up and running, get subcommittees going, and then the pace might be a little more spread out at that point. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Busted. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yes, we're going to try to piece together. I don't foresee us doing more than once per week, just as a bench line. It's a huge time commitment for everyone, but front loaded most likely until we can really get up and running with subcommittees. Just quickly, on subcommittees, once they're formed, can subcommittees then have their own meetings at any time? Do they decide, hey, we want to do a Zoom thing, and just run it and then send the minutes off? So as long as as long as it's properly documented, you have agreement from your subcommittee and there's proper reporting back to leadership. So we're kind of in the loop about what's going on. I don't see, I don't see any issue with that. Is documenting requirement for recording of the Zoom or is it just having minutes? I'd say bare minimum would be detailed minutes. Yes. I think any any proceeding ought to be properly noticed and available to the public to attend. Okay. Does that mean notification in the paper? I mean that type of notification, or no? We can we can satisfy that through other means uh, through our website through our calendar. The only reason why I bring it up is I feel like there's going to be these committees. There's going to be a lot of information flowing, and maybe availability is not always going to sometimes work in these large group settings mm -hmm. where we have a lot of you know diverse opinions. So I think sometimes if the committees can come together and say, all right, let's get some. Maybe they decide to meet twice in one week because they want to hammer a couple things out so they can get something substantive to the whole group mm -hmm. for further discussions in their subcommittees. Let me just let me discuss that more with the leadership. I don't want to yep. speak out of turn. That's just kind of off the cuff my thoughts, but yep. I'm not an expert on Zoom by any stretch of the imagination. But I believe there's an app for the person who's running Zoom that you load it on your phone, and after the meeting is over, they send you a synopsis of the whole meeting. That's news to me. I'm not yep. terribly Zoom Somebody fluent. Somebody told me so. about it, and I was like, gee, I wish I had that. <laughs> okay. I always saw another hand, but pretty much not. Yes. Will the uh, leadership team meetings be, um, be recorded anywhere? and uh, Reported or recorded? Recorded, uh, televised, uh, Zoom. And are they, is there a notice that goes out? So that was that was one of the things that was discussed in some leadership emails earlier today was trying to figure out we're trying to set up a regular, probably weekly meeting for the leadership. Um, so those details are to be determined. So I talked to the leadership. Just to be clear, the only time that that was following the first meeting and they intend to meet this evening, we'll continue rolling the tape. Yep. Other remaining questions, concerns? All right, uh, the only thing, well, Public comment. Mr. Hayes. I, I was just going to make a correction. There were, there were two seniors who spoke and requested to be appointed. Anything, anything else to add or no? no. Okay. <clears throat> All right. The uh, the only other have, thing. Uh, oh. Councilman Catarina is, is raising her hand. Go ahead, Jean Marie. Yeah, I just want to be very quick because I know you guys want to get out of there. I've been uh, watching this the whole time. Uh, believe it or not, 
Uh, but I, I want to make sure you uh, understand how much I appreciate the time being put in by every single one of you. Um, I, 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 Scarborough people are the best, and I look forward to uh, seeing the work product that comes out of this group. So hang in there. It sounds daunting, but boy, we need you. So thank you. Thank you, Jim Marie. Uh, the only other thing I have just as a housekeeping before we go is if anyone missed the sign-in sheet on the way in, please just see Tom on the way out so we can make sure we get your attendance along. Nothing else? Yes, sir. Make a motion that we adjourn. Do I have a second? A motion is made to adjourn. All in favor? All opposed? <laughs> My cheeks are peachy red. Well, but I've been, you know, my blood pressure's been an issue lately because I'm 
of the voluptuous side. So we're going to work on it. Oh, good night. See you. Take care. See ya. Uh, so, 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 you know, like, my wife is an expert. She runs it, lives in it, enjoys it. I am just
yes, there's capacity in the high school, but those kids that are starting out in primary schools yeah. will be in the high school one day. Yes, so, yes. And but I think, I think sorry, just to explain, yeah. um, I think our group was looking at that from the framework of why are there students in portables today when there's available capacity to have wet for in high school. Um, and I think kind of partly off of that, my group had a long discussion about what their willingness to tolerate what grouping, like, um, like developmental age groups they were willing to tolerate working together. So like they wanted three to five to stay together. So even if there was room in Wentworth to move them, they didn't think it was age appropriate to move them three class to make three class. So whether every group would have agreed with that statement, I don't know that opening Scarborough up to that, like shuffle this one here, shuffle that one there, this teacher teaches in this school here, and now this year, you know. There is a question asking about grade shift on the And what's the value of a grade shifting and, you know, maximize space versus One of my group recognized that outside of Maine, um, elementary schools are K through five. This is a unique thing to me, anyways. This is a very unique Maine thing to have these primary schools. And nobody seems to be thinking they had to stay that long. But that's six people. So. And is there data? To say, say. <laughs> is there data to say that we're changing oh, I the problem? Or I don't know. Like, does that have an educational impact? I think to rephrase what I heard, um, the real strongest reason to do something was the lack of capacity and this projected increase in enrollment. But there was skepticism because one, that enrollment's actually been pretty flat for the past 10, 15 years. And if you look at the projection for this year, it was off by 30 students. And so you get this birth bump in 2020 and 2021, is that enough to really do a massive change to everything that's going on? I think that's really fair. Mm -hmm. But the uh, existence of, of uh, portables basically factors in that as well. I mean, that was one that's of the what huge... staff is going to say is, is we're at a certain level of enrollment right now, but if you remove the portables from the buildings, what is the capacity of the buildings? We are way over what those right. buildings have ever. But talking to our, our team and actually going through the documents itself, like portables don't seem to be a problem inherently. Like if you go to Blue Point, you can't even tell you're in portable. So I think mine was like, very drastically uh, yeah, in contrast to that. We that was the actually one of the only things we could agree on was really? that um, portables were not suitable for learning. I think you need to make sure you're hearing from the experts, from the educators, because I mean, we all have our opinions, but I'll speak for myself. It's, it's my opinion. I don't have any expertise in, in those sorts of I, I actually looked for uh, scholarly articles on portables. I did not find any data saying that an education is worse in a portable contemporary classroom than a brick and mortar book. So, what, where, do we, where do we combine? Opinions and feelings of taxpayers with data. So, just anecdotally, one of the members in my small group was a, a former teacher, and she taught in portals, and she talked about having to evacuate the classrooms from the rodents and critters would die underneath them. And they were in the in the ductwork, and they, there was the smell in the portals were so bad that they, they couldn't teach them. To be fair, that happened to my son's classroom in the brick and mortar building. They had the whole yeah, yeah. In a different room. Fair enough. That's why it's so, anecdotally, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's true. I, I agree, but it's funny listening to this because I had to I had to wordsmith my statement about portals because we couldn't really come to consensus as to whether they all should go, maybe in some of them, maybe so it was my statement that I had to read out loud was minimize the use of words. So I couldn't I couldn't even get a consensus in the six people that were sitting here as to whether a portable was a good or a bad thing. I think the, the overall feeling was maybe the six grade points is the same, but the K through two ones were not. I don't, we don't have that exact language or they just said, mm, it's not the worst thing in the world to have a portable. 
course, we would ideally like to hear. Both companies have a lifespan, right? They do. Brick built buildings have a hundred year lifespan. And what, I don't know what is the lifespan of a formula and how can we exceed it that? So some of them have exceeded 20. Some of them are effectively new. Right. Uh, 300,000 on top, does that sound right? Oh, no, we're up to almost a million now a million by delivery portable. and installation. But per single year? Per it's portable. two classrooms. It's each one of the trailers is two classrooms. Like I'm sorry, are you, <laughs> are you saying the delivery of them or the function of oh, like running the, the bill? No, 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 purchasing of it. Uh, so including the delivery and the setup. Is, what, what's the bond paid at the full time this year? It's like $50,000 or something. What is I that? don't know. We used, the last time I remember, I, so I'm going to date myself too because we used him. But I'm not aware of this is a Todd. Jefferson, in the question. budget this year, that the town borrowed fifty thousand dollars this year for work. So let's get Todd Jefferson. I yeah. to to speak to what you said so eloquently during the meeting. I don't want to sit in this meeting and like get into mm -hmm. debate and topics, and so we all have our own opinions. And I'd like to get the enrollment. We just need everyone uh, establish a baseline on the enrollment. What was what was done? Who did it? And whether you have ongoing confidence in it. I think that's such an important part of this. Yeah, so, so a gentleman came up to me right at the end and said, you were looking for enrollment data, historics through future, and he has a chart. It's Jim Pritchard. He's going to send to all of us. Yeah, he, he pulled it out of an appendix, but I was like, I don't know. I think it was in that 111 page. He uh, read every shows. single page. Yeah, he showed it to me and it projects out to like 2035. Yeah. And it's a 2023 it's data. So we'll so send it to the whole leadership team. Yeah, so we're going to do it. So in terms of next steps, uh, we're going to have seven emails coming in with basically each group's opinions. In terms of next steps, are we thinking just trying to distill down where there is consensus to start building the problem state off of that, and then where there is consensus, like going back to portables, for example, trying to get more data as we have Doug Jepson come in, comment on feasibility, building life, or do you think it makes sense be over overreach for us to try to draft the problem statement based on those seven and then get, get consensus on a problem statement at the next meeting. I'm inclined to want to do that versus if we just if we sit down with 70 seven people and say, let's write this up, it's gonna be right. Yeah, you synthesize the input, come up with the proposed problem statement, have the body consider it and hope we will. Yeah, I was gonna say at some point we all have to acknowledge if we're not gonna have one percent every action will take care. So at some point, we're going to have to get points to move forward. And that problem statement is going to have to be pointed. It might get ugly. But it's uh, yeah. Right? Well, that at some point can be made just a generalized statement and then boil down all of our seven groups into one, two, three, four, vote it in, vote it out. Is it a problem? Is it not? Or just being a random yeah. example. But I'm trying to remember those like uh, voting things that you do. Conference. Yeah, I get a conference. Yeah. I wonder if I saw that. Is it good software? Yeah. yeah. But it, I feel like it's got to be like, you know, is it um, these like things and people vote for agree or something and then see what the split is like? Because right now I would say it's X, Y, and Z. But I think we've got to show, we've got to get something from statement that at least 70% of people here in this group agree on, you know? And I think if we try and push through something and we don't feel that backing, it's like, it's not going to be Part of me, um, I had a little bit of a mixed view on whether I felt um, the homework was fully pushed through, which is understandable. There was a lot to it. So I think we have to decide either as a group or a leadership group. Um, we want to take what was said and let the superintendent, buildings facility, et cetera, provide more context to some of the things that were said um, to then let people decide, is it actually an issue before we say, yeah, that's it. Or if someone says, no, that's not an issue, then every kid has five square feet when the, I'm not just, five square feet when the state says you should have a hundred 
or you know they actually have 200 and the state really says you only need 100 um kind of both sides of it where we let some of the experts speak to it might, some this of might be good practice to take like five questions that someone asked today and we put it in like an excel of rows and we ask like the, the schools to answer or someone to answer so that we get we come back next week and be like all right we have answers to these five questions it seems to me that there's a, I want to be careful, but it seems to me as if there's a, there's a group that is not going to believe anything that comes from the, the education team. Um, they believe that the, the studies that we've been presented are all biased. Anything that we hear is going to support the case that has already been made. So, is there how how do we how do we circle that square, right? To where they're the experts that are, need to inform us of the problem, but there's inherent in the group um, that don't want to you know there, there's a people distrust. just don't want it to don't want to um, yeah distrust. Thank you. I think at some point. What do you need? If this isn't it, what do you need? Because we are going to hit it with the town as well. Like if they're represented here, but they're represented in other parts of the town um, who have voices who speak to each other. Um, but if I mean, you can only put so much of that in front of someone before you just turn around and say that this isn't enough. What do you? Need? And if they can't come up with it, but if they say, you know, I need the superintendent. Again, example, a superintendent walking in and saying, this is what we've had, this is the past three years data, and this is what it is. I mean, if they can not trust the data, but they can't come up with what they need, then yeah. Yeah, I, I can't because it, it came up like we were talking, and I just kept circling it back to you. Okay, I hear that you don't you know, think in moment that is what more do you want to see out of the moment that what what question? And that's, I think, the point of view of the thing, which is, all right, you don't believe it. Tell me what your problem with it is, and then how to get you information to supplement. Yes. If I heard there's the same. If I heard that there's like four seniors that were uh, you know, offered that they voted very strongly no against the thing, but all four of them really wanted to find a solution to make the whole thing. Yeah. If there's any obstruction. No, I, I think everybody agrees there's a problem and they want a solution. I, I, my observation is, is just that uh, there's, a, there's an inherent skepticism to the data that's been presented. And, and in that it perhaps is biased. Right? And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm just concerned that we're going to really struggle to make progress if there's if every piece of data we put in front of them is, is met with that same skepticism. Because to your point, if you don't trust the data and we're trying to make data-driven decisions, then we're at an impasse. Sure. So as well, the problem of the study was a big pain point. Uh, ultimately, we agreed that the enrollment study was probably a floor and that there was some plus that was, they felt, going to be the real number. Um, so, you know, maybe it's an open ended answer, right? That there's phase A, B, and C, and now we're going to be one that's supposed to be problem statement or solutions. We're talking about problem statement. Um, but maybe that's part of the problem statement is that flexibility. The other thing I wanted to say about the problem statement is uh, crafting the words very carefully as you all are aware um, is going to make a big difference in how it's received. I think any mention of portables is going to um, you know it's a hot button hot. So if we can craft the statement in a way that you know doesn't say portable specifically but says 
you know, space capacity issue or um, lifespan of facilities that more people can get on board with that if we then say you know, this portable lifespan is 20 years and we're up to 27 years. I think a lot more people can get on board with that and simply say portables are bad. We need well, to be a ways to get to, to, to put a premium on, on security. I mean, having kids walk in the open air. Um, equity and educational opportunities, those, those are words that get, get to the core of some of those issues. Right. Without using the hot button. Exactly. I mean, yeah. it's going to be great to see the survey, hopefully, uh, see that soon. Because uh, I, I, my kind of sense after today's discussion that portables are more of a splitting issue rather than everybody's on this side of the table. Uh, but that, I was actually surprised at the level of census around pre-K, even among the seniors. So I don't know if you guys are asking a question about that. That it was necessary or unnecessary? Not necessary, but like really good to have. Coming. Finds our school. I don't get to say that. I mean, pre -K. <laughs> well, I think it was actually. It would be interesting to hear the school board's comments on that because my understanding is there was some arrangement with Shooting Stars that used to be private that is now going semi-public. Public. I don't know. My friends are close. Just got kicked out of the fish because it is now considered a Scarborough preschool as of next year. Mm -hmm. um, there was a little. Now that I'm. Remembering, there was a little side conversation going on about it because are we fun? Are we paying a private to do what we should be doing publicly? Um, and is that again? This is a school board question, definitely. Yeah, I'm me. speaking way out of turn because I, I remember bits and pieces of this conversation. But essentially, three and four year olds that have been identified by the state who require special services is now. The town has to provide those services, so came up in my and so yes. in order to yeah. Meet, yeah, so in order to meet the kids who've been identified by CDS, Scarborough and Public Schools has partnered with Shooting Stars to create a program for them specifically. Those so they have to do it. That was the partnership that the yeah, school department the went with. I don't yeah. know the details of why. I don't think it's capacity to extend that pre-K to. Uh, Right. They are just trying to serve the students that right. it's they have a different legally required to serve. Should they serve? They are not increasing. They rearranged. Uh, yeah, no, I completely agree. My understanding is they rearranged how the classrooms were made out. Hello. Hey. And we're adjourned. We saw the. Uh, we saw the. Uh, we're back over here. here. So, yeah. So Welcome. What, just, just just to put a note on that though, but if we need uh, like a hundred and fifty million dollars or hundred and fifty extra seats at the K to two level, that's one thing. If it's and we're gonna offer pre-K, like that might it's a consensus issue that might But it's not just capacity, it's aging buildings that need massive infusion of money just for efficiency and you know, building envelope roofs, mechanical systems. So I think Todd Jefferson would be be honest, I didn't come through in this case at all. Failing this, uh, failing, failing them. Well, because I think there's a lot of work that vet the, the prior effort to a point where they agreed with all those. So, uh, yeah, fair enough. In this yeah. case, I don't think uh, attended to that issue because they'd already discussed it and decided yeah. on it. I'd also say just watch for when the budget comes out and everything that goes into capital improvement. All right, so it's going to be a lot. In yeah. Is the pre K at Shooting Stars just for the people? Oh, this is, I can answer this all in that case. So we, we, that is going to be a starter program. It'll be one classroom. 16 kids, it'll be, we are not in a position to start a full scale pre K program. We obviously have to be after that. Um, no, it'll be a lot of reading. Program. So, um, just like other districts have done it, so it'll be a starting point um, in, with, the, with the goal to expand and you know, hopefully one day we can have. 
that is an uphill battle with the community. I mean, not everybody supports a, a public pre-K. Um, so I think that if the work with this committee needs to be focused on the problems that exist today, which are exist in the K-8, uh, pre-K is an entirely different topic, entirely different set of groups. Yeah, I think one of the things that came up in my group I would really like for this to be a portrayal of a group and not necessarily my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Good disclaimer. Good thing. Yeah. Is that um, the town of okay. the town of Scarborough year after year has just continued to ask me more and more and more whether it be this building, the this, the that, and they felt that there needed to be some address. opportunity as something to answer the problem yeah. um, and not just continually ask more and more and more. Um, that's kind of one of the things that I think we need to address that. It's not this, not the group either. The group is now is poorly timed given those three requirements. Yeah, it was challenging. I was like, okay. I was like, task faster. I'm like, do we have a problem? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we got through reading your list and then we and then opened we, it up for the yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, So, I mean, so the state is just so everybody hears where the state is actually funding that pre K program. It's going to be a net cost of zero for the time. It's a partnership. So, if that's anybody's concern. Well, I think in the business case that we had everybody review the homework, mm -hmm. like in the four school solution, it said pre K will be offered, whereas in the consolidated it didn't. So that people like picked up on that and they said, hey, that's like a really cool service that we work. I don't know why. I, I wasn't around for when that was developed, but that has come up before. Um, I, I can't. I mean, the business like, case was last May. Like, it was no. just a capacity thing. It was that we didn't, it was that we couldn't. Present a consolidated school that had capacity for K, pre K also. And I think the opportunity presented, uh, and I heard eight quarters suggested as the location is if we vacate the three primary schools and go to the unified, one of those schools presumably could be used for pre K. Yeah, yeah, in, in the future. But that is, I think that that's an uphill battle. So. Well, you might recall that we kept getting asked, what are you going to do with the old schools? What are you going to do with the old yeah. school? Yeah. Right, and we, we were we trying. dodged that as best we could. But back to the next meeting, we've got a, a meeting of a week from now. Can I have just taken a moment to summarize three kind of things that I'm hearing in the problem statement for discussion? I don't know if we can get there tonight, but to discuss. And this is the portable one addressing facility lifespan needs with renovation or replacement. Security and safety, future expansion, or maybe you should just say expansion for potential additional programs and population growth. We'll put that out there to the group as a potential start of a problem statement. So. Can you just turn it? I'm yeah, you can. I'm seeing. Yes, yeah. 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 so yeah. yeah. so yeah. 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 we are. Well, we got more than the individual learners. We're all like. So what? So maybe thoughts if if you could email that to the full team. And then will we try to do the Zoom tomorrow at one? I know it's super short notice for staff, but. Um, you know, yeah. As long as we're not habitually making them jump, I think we can make that work. Um, I I think that should be okay. I think you've heard it. Something to ponder something. overnight, and then I don't think we're going to get all seven groups emailed. But between now and one p.m. tomorrow, try to start putting in our mind getting something of a problem statement together to bring back to the group. I actually think um, I mean I don't know, I'll open it up, but, but I, I think the problem statement. Yeah. Super good size. So a nod to I think I, I think the point on you know the failing facilities regardless.
regardless of capacity, if we weren't going to have a capacity problem, you still have buildings that are need renovation. Uh, I, I, think, I think that's worth, that's, that's part of the problem. Well, so you can say that we have, you know, a capacity issue and uh, school facility needs that we need to address. And we need like all the work to be done surrounding how we don't need to pigeonhole ourselves into some statement of what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I yeah, I mean, I, I, I think we heard a lot of parts of the problem today, and I think it's okay to try to put as many of those problems, of those points into the problem statement as we can, rather than keep it, because if you, if our statement is so narrow that it's just about capacity, then we're going to find a solution that addresses capacity only. So. I think we also, um, my team really struggled with what our purpose with the at first, so before we do the process, laying out what phase one, what our actual purpose is, because we were all of a sudden talking about uh, clamping down on building permits and changing <laughs> the demographic of Scarborough and redistrict and like kind of all of these other things, which are have a room that they should be addressed in. You know, I encourage those people to speak in those, but it's not <laughs> here. And so before we kind of try and tackle like what is this phase one issue like looking at that because they wanted to look at where they could build how they could build what builders were using what planners were using and everything it, it was really um time to kind of come back i guess that's the point of the problem statement but i don't know if we'll get consensus unless we can have just a quick reminder of what the goal of this specific role is it's really like a couple guiding principles mm -hmm. like we're not just talking about like where we're physically plopping the building necessarily yeah yeah no, that is not the problem at this point. Sure. I mean, it would be nice. So who's up this time, though? Who's up? Who's up this time? Stop it. <laughs> so do we want to ponder between now and so tomorrow just we go that problem statement, a draft of one for the meeting we did today? The other thing I would say we should probably think about between now and tomorrow's meeting is what we would like the full committee to kind of plug into at the next meeting. Everyone's everyone's itching to do subcommittees and jump into they are. solutions. Yeah, well, no, I guess that I think there's there's so much pent up like it's not frustration. I think a little bit was frustration at first, but I think there's energy. Yeah, just and needs, and needs, yeah, and needs an outlet. Yeah. At some point, Nick, should there be some um, maybe engagement with Todd Jackson to talk about the facilities and what's going on with them? Yeah, because that. before we get too far down a pathway of here are all these great ideas, understand what we're getting into. Within that building. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, what's the plan for the field trip? Everyone, yeah. it's some some point soon. I think it's up to you to do all. I think we need, we need to get the schools. Right. You know what? But can that be on our agenda for tomorrow to like pinpoint with the date mm -hmm. uh, to ask? That would that would be a good like. Hey guys, this is when you know in, in this general vicinity. Obviously, like we probably need a release. Diane and Jeff had mentioned break it up and release tonight. Yes, just absolutely. The numbers of these two. So. I mean, you, yeah, you would want to. So, yeah, I got to put the teacher cut off for whatever reason. Yes. Vehemently asked to have the um, tourist experience in the house. To sleep all that. I know. There's a big I hear you, but I'm just putting it out there. They're going to be not being able to see the school in action. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I, when I the children are within the building. I wouldn't even want. Uh -uh. I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't want my kid in school that day. Yeah. I I know people are going to be disappointed. And I have a strong they reaction. The in the hallway and that comes strewn on the floor. I totally hear that. I mean, I there is quite a difference. Yeah, there's some good pictures in the video that I think you can share with for tomorrow agenda to try to hammer down maybe when we do field trip. Yes. Okay. I mean, I just I don't think we need to spend a ton of time on it, but we'll have, I believe, we'll have Jeff and Diane there, um, or at least one of them mm -hmm. um, that can say, well, you know, this is the this is the length of time we need to give our notice, make sure that 
we have to make sure that it, uh, after the programs are not still working, things like that. I mean, there, there are more considerations than Jane was giving people in there when there's a bunch of kids in there. There's other concerns with that. So, but just to uh, express the same concern with this group, we need to have public notice and public ability to listen to your proceedings. Uh, so, uh, that like was going to be my question. Around? Is it too early? No, no. You're oh. talking about meeting at one tomorrow? Oh. Who knows about that? That's, we, we, we have addressed that concern. We, uh, we need to schedule regular meetings. Um, this group has been in consensus. That, 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 yes. The point was raised tonight. And yep. That yeah. person's got it's to watch every move. We're trying. So it's so a very good point. In a, yeah. So I don't understand the rules. So, so for us to meet a, as a leadership committee, we have to tell the Yes. Our constituents that we're meeting? Yes. yes. No. It's a public no. proceeding. No. It's not subject to Isn't the same. Ad hoc? It's it's well, I think it's best I think practice. It's best it's practice. Right. I'm absolutely and I would advocate for it all day long, but only public right. meetings of elected bodies are subject to public meeting rules. Legally. Yeah. Right. And so I, I absolutely think we should post it, get it on the calendar, send an email to the whole SBAC to say that the leadership team is meeting, if that's, you know, to make it so the more public. Committee, like planning board or zoning board does not need to post in advance? Yeah, other legal yeah. They're, yeah, but they're, what the statutes are. They're legal, yes, yeah, state statutes. Well, that, and I think there is a respect, like it's learning to voice in our second meeting. Like there, you know, the certain demographic isn't represented within you all, I want to have a voice. Like it's already been addressed by the committee that they want to have it. The suggestion was the cabal right here is making the decisions. Right. I think you need to do whatever you can to disavow that yeah. as early yeah. as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I think the only option we have <clears throat> in terms of the problems we're planning to catch up, right. getting everything formed, uh, unless we're the best way to get more notice would be not meeting as a full body next Monday and waiting to the leadership day Tuesday, but getting our deadline. Do you, um, to be completely good. honest, this works for me. If you have my captive attention on Monday, I'd rather just do our leadership meeting the following Monday. Mm -hmm. yeah. The information is fresh. I'm already here, and you're not breaking up tomorrow. Yeah, you know? I could be. I could be on board with that as right. long as we well, are consistent well, about when we end the meeting. Well, meetings hopefully, it's going to be more just formalizing your next agenda. I think. Yeah. We need to get past this initial phase, and I think it's going to fall into. Focus a bit better. Find what kind of locked into tomorrow. Well, one thing you could do is you could share out through a Google Doc that prompt statement. Folks could collaborate and I guess Mario's going to come forward with a proposed problem statement for discussion. Would it make sense to have tomorrow, like Thursday or Friday, in order to meet that? Because to Tom's point, there's a Google Google Doc we can work out of. Give that full notice so nobody can come back and say you're working behind the scenes yeah and you give them just a little more time we'll still meet before the meeting next week did you say thursday yeah we do friday yeah i just came monday and thursday okay <laughs> okay so what time works on fridays for a standing meeting or just for this week just to just get us through i agree with what nick's saying we just Kind of like the idea of Monday after the main meeting. It's going to make for a long Monday for all of us, but Monday after the main meeting, we have the leadership meeting, and it's not busted up on Tuesday. I would say this is just to get us through until we get a regular, get into the rhythm of a regular. Yeah. So just a one, just this week. We need to find lunch as so I have a lunch meeting. Anytime to decide whether the one, but it'll be there. Words available of, or words of one is available. One to three thirty. I'm flexible. I cannot do eleven to twelve thirty. Any other sounds fun? Wide open. Yes. <laughs> um. Uh. Words are hard for me. Ten to three thirty. Works as it works. Okay. 10 to 4.30? No, 3.30. Sorry, another meeting. 4.30? <laughs> um, I could 
do after uh, after so I can be flexible beyond that. I can be flexible um, with the exception of eleven to one. I saw Richard Bowles. <laughs> how about how about two and three? Friday, two and three, 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 three. Sure. Um, Zoom. Zoom. I have to stop for those of us who have kids. I have to get my son off the list. Yeah. Yeah. All have to do the, the three is the hard stop. Okay. Okay. And the point of that would be to work, work for the public statement and finalize the agenda. Correct. Um, if everyone's okay with it, I will email the full to say this is when the next leadership meeting is. So there'll be a short turnaround between meeting and agenda of the full committee, but then going forward Monday after, yeah. sorry, on Mondays after the main committee is when the leadership meeting. That sounds great. Question are, is it, this, is it the same structure as like we have here where like public comment is allowed at the end or are they allowed? I just, I put it on there so? towards the end. No, 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 I thought it was great, but I just mean like for our little leadership, would we ask that like if someone decided to stay late and attend this, that they yeah, don't? Yeah, we can could, we could put on the agenda and then say, put on early public comment. And <laughs> no one here, no public comment. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. And Friday will be Zoom? Someone Zoom, yes. yes. Yeah. Someone sure I will. Take care of that. Okay. So Friday, Two to two to three, hard stop at three on Zoom uh, for agenda setting and more than a problem statement. Um, only other thing I had, I don't know if everyone saw the email exchange, you get a member basically email and say, I'm sick, I can't be there tonight, take me off the committee. I wrote back and kept it open and then just said, thanks for letting us know. Julian really brought up a good point, which is if someone's sick, probably shouldn't strike that against well, them. Yeah. So we didn't have, they didn't violate our policy. They I just want to make sure they did. Yeah, I think they thought they had. Yeah, I think that they thought this is just a second meeting of the same. I just kept it open to say thanks for letting us know. Was it four overall or three consecutive or something like that? I think that sounds right. Well, we can just touch base and say if you really don't want to be honest, fine. But we just want to make sure you know that you're not being punished. Right. Yeah. This time of year. And it also says it has to be unexcused absences. Right. So, I mean, is everyone up here with me emailing them back to basically say, listen, yeah. don't have yeah. to leave. Yeah. Of course. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the only other thing I had is real quick so I want to go home. Is there anything else anyone wants to add in the agenda for Friday? Hey, just email it. Okay. Thank you. Um, I will probably chronically be running in here. Do you want an email every time? or? You don't mind. Sure, that's fine. Nope. So I'm sitting on the shuttle. We even made men. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Can I just ask one thing? I, I beg your pardon for blurting out and suggesting we have a committee to the survey. I think it's phenomenal. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I just ask that because that's something we could do for next week, I think. Um, if that's what you want to pursue, I'll just see if we get the final poll with that. We'll have to tally the score of the results ourselves. Yeah. I think we can do that. I, I, I need to introduce a question as we're kind of adjourned, but <laughs> why, why only 4,000 people? Why doesn't the survey just go to everybody? And as long as you get 600 respondents, it's statistically relevant. Really expensive. Is really expensive. Yeah. The postage and, and printing and mailing. Yeah. It's a paper survey? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're only going to get seniors who respond. <laughs> They'll be well represented. Right? <laughs> but if you did it electronic, you get the vice versa. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, so I thought we were doing both. We are doing both. So it was very but well. statistically so valid. Just statistically valid will push off by mail. Once we get that, we can release a link that anyone can just go on. Yes. How It'll long be, are they given online to respond to be a part of the like formulator two weeks or something? And, and it's not part of the statistically valid result. What we found is that that mirrors our statistically valid yeah. result most um, of the time. Okay. They're, they're within points. If it's not your pain or something. Well, you may just have a you may just have a different demographic that's really interesting. That may help you out just online. Yeah. But it seems to track. Hmm. It took minutes for this meeting, so I'll get it written up. We can go to you got this meeting for, for this one, not the main. Yeah, I'll try the main one. I, I kept I tried to keep notes for the seven groups. But anyway, <laughs> thank you. no, having it's the, not, uh, the it's not even the speakers report out to us. Uh, right, you were going to see her. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm, 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 I'
make a motion to it just adjourn. started in 2020. Uh, I don't know if I ever actually made one, but let's do it. I move to adjourn. Order. All those in favor. Hey. 21, 18. Oh, okay. I just want to point out that she's really. Every time. Oh, oh. Individually, you can call out the person's name and ask them the I, A, or name. Uh, say that again. Oh, wow. Technically, because you had members, voting members on the Zoom call, you were supposed to do a roll call, call vote, not a hands up, hands down. <laughs> Lately? <clears throat> Two and a half, three hours? Yeah. I just asked how long it's been. There I go, just. But we also do a workshop first. That's so awesome. Usually... Lately, it's not uncommon for us to go 5.30 to 10. What are you working? Oh, like we just you were. We are adjourned, right? We're adjourned. Yeah, all right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God.